Hi, I'm Mark, one of the Fuji guys, and today in this video, we're going to talk about and demonstrate the new AF custom modes in the X-T2 camera. So I've been joined here by professional photographer Jeff Carter. Hi Mark. Hi Jeff, thanks for coming to see us. Pleasure. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a, I've been a motorsport photographer for 20 years. I currently work in the World Endurance Championship, European Le Mans series and the 24 Hours of Le Mans. I also work for the FIA, which is the world governing body of motorsport. And how long have you been shooting with the X-Series? I got my first X-Series in 2012. I got the X100 and the X-Pro1. I ran that alongside my DSLR system, but in 2014 I made the switch when the X-T1s came out, so I ditched my DSLRs and went exclusively to Fujifilm. So no more DSLR, no. all mirrorless, all X-Series. Yeah. It's great to hear. So you've been using the X-T2 now since April 2016. How have you found it? Well, we got it at Silverstone. Uh, we tried it there. We've tried it in various events around Europe, including the 24 Hours of Le Mans. And we have to say this camera is a game changer for the X-Series as far as sport and wildlife photography is concerned. So the X-T2 has all of the autofocus features that you get in the other cameras, but what really sets it apart are the AF custom modes. So we're going to go trackside and Jeff's going to demonstrate to us how each of the features works and what sort of situation you use it in. We've improved the autofocus algorithm in the X-T2 to enable better tracking for different types of moving subjects. There's five different presets you can select in the camera and each of those presets is made up from three different factors. Tracking sensitivity, speed tracking sensitivity and zone area switching. Tracking sensitivity is the delay from when the camera loses sight of the subject it is tracking until when it tries to pick up a new subject. So if you set the camera on zero tracking sensitivity, as soon as a subject moves in front of the subject you're tracking, the camera will automatically adjust and lock onto the new thing. Stick it on four and it will add a delay. Now a good example of this is obstructions. We've got one here. If you're in the spectator area, you see these things a lot. So you don't want to lose the car you're tracking with if one of those goes across the frame. Another example is a car going in front of another car. You may want to track that one car. You don't want to lose the lock and it hunt on that. Less obvious is things like lights. You know, we, in Le Mans we have lights on cars. Sometimes the autofocus can get confused and it can lose the lock. And shiny bodywork with bright sunshine. I know in the UK we don't suffer from that too much, but uh, we do get bright sunshine on shiny bodywork. What I do is I will then put it onto two uh, and adjust it from there to make sure that I don't lose the lock on those cars. Speed tracking sensitivity relates to the way the camera predicts the position of the subject as it's moving while it's being tracked. So if you have it set to zero, the camera will always assume that the subject is moving at a very constant speed and the prediction will always be related to that. However, if you set it to two or one, the camera will actually take into account changes of speed and then apply that to where it predicts where the autofocus is going to move to. A great example of that is here at the Melbourne Hairpin. You've got cars coming towards us over the breast of a hill, crest of a hill, and they come round the corner, they start decelerating into the corner, a very slow corner, and then they accelerate away. So if you had it on zero, the car would actually be behind the focus point when it starts predicting. So you set the sensitivity to one or two, in this case I would choose two, but it would then to predict the cars are going to slow down, would then follow the car around the corner and accelerate away, and the camera should follow the acceleration up the hill. Let's see that in action, shall we? Zone area switching only applies when the camera sets to zone AF mode and essentially it allows you to prioritise which part of the zone is in focus. So you can set it to centre, which will prioritise the centre part of the zone, you can set it to front, so it will always prioritise anywhere in the zone that's the closest to the camera as possible. 
or you can leave it in auto, which will continue to track whatever the first subject the camera locked onto. Now for me, I tend to use auto because it gives you an all-round um, setting and I need to follow a specific car. It could be the leader, it could be a specific car that I'm working with, a team I'm working with, but that's what I tend to use. The good example though, where I might use front, would be here at Donington Park. We're at the first corner here at Redgate and you may want to get, when, the, when you're at the start of the race, the pack is coming towards you, you want to concentrate on the front car. You don't really care what car it is, it's the leader, you want to concentrate on it. So that would be a good example of where to use front. Let's have a look at that in action. Those are the three parameters that can be changed in order to customise how the autofocus tracking features work within the X-T2. Different combinations of the three make up the five presets in the camera. Jeff, of these ones, which do you use and for what? Well, I tend to use preset three, which is for accelerating, decelerating objects, which a car is a perfect example of a car. Um, so that's my go-to. I also use set four, which is for a suddenly appearing objects, which we did earlier. We did a, as the rise, the car, as it came over the top of the rise, suddenly appeared in the frame. That is perfect for locking onto that car. I also use set two, which is for ignoring obstacles. Now that describes a pit lane really well, a very busy pit lane, you've got mechanics. You want to focus on the driver, a mechanic running between the car, you and the, and the driver will not be fooled by the AF, won't be fooled by it. So that's great. For other things like wildlife, I shoot a lot of wildlife and set five is great because that's erratically moving objects and that's a bird in flight. Um, and also I shoot a lot of rugby team sports and that, again, you've got the ball moving in different directions, very quick movements. That's great for team sports, as is uh, set two, which is ignoring obstacles, ignoring that referee that gets between you and the, and the, and the ball. It's great for that. The set one is a is general go-to if you're not quite sure, set it on set one and then adapt. You can adapt this through the customised setting at custom set six, and that's fantastic for that sort of uh, thing because you can adapt the XT2 for how you shoot and that's what this camera is about. It's very good at adapting for your style of shooting. The autofocus improvements in the X-T2 have not been limited to just speed and accuracy like we've done with previous cameras. This is now an intelligent autofocus system which allows professional photographers like Jeff to get the best results in any situation possible.